Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel, or if you're brand new here, hi, hello, you're here on a Tuesday, and so that means that we're doing deep dives into a particular topic around social, ethical, or environmental issues. This one's quite a social one. Now, what we do here is we put on some makeup and talk about a serious issue. This one, I do have a bit of a trigger warning for you. We're talking about mental health issues, we're talking about suicide, we're talking about big relationship issues and I will of course have timestamps in there to make sure that you're aware of that and I'll have that in the description box as well along with all of the products that I've used on my face and all of my sources as well. So everything I use is cruelty free, vegan and not owned by parent companies that test on animals in case you're interested. I know that today I've done a very simple look. My voice has finally come back after having a half hour break. My voice will be croaky throughout all of this because I'm dealing with a cold right now. So if I sound a little bit different that's why, but sadly, the YouTube algorithm needs me to create content all the time, so that's exactly what I'm doing. That actually brings me back to the fact that about 90% of people don't actually subscribe to my channel, that watch my content, and I would so appreciate it if you could please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, it's just down below. It doesn't cost you anything. It just means that hopefully I'll be able to get to like a thousand subscribers soon, and then that will make a big difference because I'll be able to use the community tab and interact with you more. And of course, it does mean that I'll be able to actually apply for the partnership program. So talk shows. This is our topic of today. Talk shows have been a source of entertainment for many generations. So we have the silent generation, we've got boomers, we've got millennials, and of course Gen X, sorry. Same as all of the memes say, I forgot about them. So this is kind of marketed as like daytime TV. So anytime that I was off sick, which was a lot as a child, I would watch shows like this, I, especially Dr. Phil. I remember a lot of Dr. Phil. A lot of these shows that are really targeted during the daytime and they're targeted towards the lower socioeconomic people as well as people that uh, like staying at home with kids or the older generation. So you've got quite a wide range of people that they are playing to and there's there's a show for every kind of person. Now what we're actually doing is I'm talking only about the adults here, the ones that can consent to going on these shows, the ones that uh, have chosen to do this themselves and next week what we'll be talking about is the children and the exploitation of the children that goes on these shows um, because that is a very huge issue and I need a separate video for that. It's too deep a topic because this video is already very long. Also another thing that we'll be talking about is the solution so watch all the way to the end so you can know what we can do to tackle all of this stuff. In case you're wondering this was a planned surgery I'm still keeping it bandaged up it's three weeks after the surgery I'm gonna do a video on that as well so that people can know what to expect if they have to go through something similar. I'm fine, I'm okay. I'm going to be drinking so much tea to try and get through this. So first off we had the Phil Donahue show which actually started in 1970 and it finished in 1996. This was kind of like the pioneer. A particular theme and then discussions would happen after that so they had sessions about divorce. This is very much like a traditional values sort of thing. Um, still like there is still an attempt at understanding. I don't even know if he had actual qualifications to discuss the things that he was talking about. He also did like episodes with celebrities like Muhammad Ali and stuff like that too. Which leads me then on to Oprah. One of the more palatable shows I find, like I definitely found whilst watching all of these I was more happy watching the Oprah shows even though I was still able to like be like oh that's exploitative, that's exploitative, that's bad, that's bad. Like. She's still a more personable person and I've talked about her in my hustle culture video. So she is kind of similar to Phil Donahue, um, but because like her show ran from the 80s to the 2000s, like it's definitely more sensationalist. And then that brings me on to Sally Jesse Raphael. Definitely still traditional values. They try to have conversations. Um, and like get to a bit of a deeper understanding but you can still tell that it's very much a very produced show shall we say. And then we've got Ricky Lake so she started her show at the tender age of 24 and her first episode was covering someone from the Westboro Baptist Church and that was like I'll link the episode for you to watch down below. It was a lot. The producers really meddled a lot with this show. I think that Ricky herself is actually a nice person. Like she was as much of an ally as a white person would be in that time to the AIDS crisis. Like she was very much a more inclusive minded person. Then we need to talk about Maury. Now I had never watched Maury before and I'm never gonna have to watch it again after 
film in this video and I'm so grateful for that. So the Maury show is the classic, um, you are not the father. Then we've got Jeremy Kyle. Now Jeremy Kyle is the only person from the UK that is actually on this list that I'm going to be talking about. I used to love this show myself. I know, everyone can learn, change and grow. So his show had a lot of issues, shall we say. And then we've got people like Dr. Phil, who is not even a licensed practitioner at this time. Um, he could have renewed his license, but he hasn't. Then we need to talk about uh, Jerry Springer. Now, I, me and my brother used to watch this when we were kids and loved it. But I've had to watch a few episodes. I could only handle a few. And it's the fakest rubbish ever. Like, it's like WWE, WWF sort of wrestling level fakeness and he makes really snide comments all the time it's like well you definitely can't be employed if you're coming on this show you can't be employed if you're watching this show it's just like it's really classist his mentality but now let's talk about the bigger wider themes emotional labor now like i mentioned most of these shows actually depend on interpersonal relationships falling apart people having like a lot of issues which have not been resolved through therapy the people on the show to provide like all of the emotions, everything, it's just manipulated by the producers and by the host. A lot of the issues that get covered are like, my spouse was cheating on me, what it's like being the other woman, drug abuse, cheating, who's the father, parental issues, relationship problems of any kind, um, people that don't fit the norm in terms of like their hobbies, their likes, their mould as a person. Oh, and then also there is a big section which focuses on teen pregnancy, teens and children being sexualized, all of this other stuff, um, which we will talk about in another video because the children issue is a very separate issue. Domestic violence is also a big topic. Um, these shows aren't exactly about finding solutions, they're more about validation for the people that are going on the show. Because honestly, if they actually wanted solutions, then all of the people involved in these shows would be like, okay, cool, we'll set you up with like 10 sessions of therapy with a therapist that is specialized in this area, but that doesn't exactly make good TV because you can just exploit people by putting all of their emotions, all of their trauma out on stage in front of a live audience and then it actually gets filmed and captured and is out there forever because thanks to the internet and archives and stuff like you can watch basically all of the episodes you could ever want. And the thing is that people are actually sought out that are in a state of psychological distress. The biggest problem is the fact that all of the trauma and everything is dragged out on screen whilst people have not come to any conclusions themselves. A lot of the times the things are very fresh in their minds like things have literally just happened and so people haven't been able to like let everything sink in properly. They're still processing and kind of going through a state of shock. There's this sort of feeling like I talked about in the Priscilla video where they're just trying to tease out all of the juiciest gossip and be like this shocking thing that shocking thing please relive this awful trauma of yours in front of many people even though you don't you did not know or expect that you would have to do this but hey you know what we're also not gonna give you long lasting psychological help afterwards we're just gonna leave you once you've gone through this next traumatic event in front of everyone else where everyone's booing you jeering at you judging you openly and then you just carry on and you go home and then you have to apparently like live the rest of your life and make the changes that were recommended to you it's a lot of issues and it all relies on emotional labor of others like of victims in a lot of cases then this leads me on to my next problem which is exploitation of the poor because most of the people that go on these shows that actually watch these shows are of like lower class or um, lower middle class. These people don't really have easy access to healthcare, daycare, psychological help because like all of that stuff just costs money and people do not have access to it. And same as with paternity tests because paternity tests whilst they may have come down in price now they were still incredibly expensive and they are still very expensive especially if you're earning like $11 an hour or whatever it is for the average in America. I think it's $11.30 how are you meant to get the help that you need even if you want to get the help along with like all of the stigmas around getting help for mental health so people want to go on these shows to obviously like get their problem solved because that's the idea that is sold to them a lot of it comes down to the inherent class structures and situations that have been created by this capitalist world in order to keep the poor down this is just another way to exploit them because they can't get the help that they actually need and these shows despite what they may say aren't there to try and help them they're there to make a showcase out of the poor and once you realize that you can never really watch these shows like 
happily again. <laughs> at least I definitely can't. So really it's like the only way that you can get the psychological help or at least what you think is psychological help because you may not actually know that these people are not qualified because people still call themselves doctor. So you go on these shows thinking that you're going to get help and thinking that you're going to be validated, have your solution solved and that it won't be all that hard. It's built on the back of broken systems and instead of changing the system, it's a way of exploiting the system. Because you see these other people going on the show, you see it's like such a fun time because it creates this emotional connection through all of these jump cuts, through all of these emotional stories being told and everything. You think that it will be a good time for you to go on the show so when you're going through something, you reach out to them and you're like, please help me, I've got something that will make really great TV, I'm going to get famous this way because sadly some people do become famous from these shows, um, which is really bad. Obviously, I don't think I need to tell you why that's a bad thing. Like, so they're like, well, this could be my chance to get out of poverty. This could be my chance to actually solve my problem. I could be able to get in on that will or whatever other family drama is going on. Like, now I've got proof that my husband cheated on me, I can get the alimony. Now that I've got proof of, like, whatever kind of abuse was going on, and now I can get this justice because, that, like I said, that's the way it's just sold. <laughs> But all of these issues combined lead to the next problem, which is guiltless judgment. Bringing the freaks out on stage, so to speak. Whether they admit to it or not, or whether they're open about it, like Jerry and Jeremy, <laughs> try saying that ten times, and Dr. Phil, like all of them, in particular with the men, it creates a lot of judgment. And this is definitely what I found when I was watching um, old episodes of the Donahue show. A lot of judgment, especially towards like teen mums and stuff. Like, oh, I know that this is from like the 80s and stuff, but it's like oh, 90s even. Like, oh, maybe really angry as a feminist watching this. Obviously the producers, the editors, everyone, like that they, they all play this part in creating these feelings for you of judgment because they can write the narrative in whatever way they want to write the narrative. And it makes more sense to actually make these people look worse, to have like those dramatic music pieces and have like those dramatic cutaways because you want to make all the viewers at home it feel like they would never do the stuff that these people are doing. They would never stoop so low. And you want to create this feeling of judgement. So when they're bringing out the contestants, <laughs> sorry, I mean the guests. <laughs> no one starts ringing a bell when people start fighting like it's written in the script, eh Jerry? I'm talking about judgement as I'm judging this stuff. I understand the irony that, that is my whole life. <laughs> So often things like my weird kink or people that are goth or people that are gay or people that are bisexual because bisexuality is seen as a thing that you're a part-time lesbian, like that is a phrase that gets talked about. And same as, I'm sorry, but the whole attitude to the LGBTQIA plus community is really, really negative on these shows. Like people whoop and cheer when there's like women that are staged to a kiss and make out and be in relationships and stuff on stage but then the mention of gay everyone's like oh just anyone that doesn't actually fit into what society deems as being acceptable they get judged um for like what they do like i said big joel has actually done episodes about this and i'll just link that because i won't dive too deep into it it's really the same circus just on tv instead and masqueraded as a platform to help people when it doesn't actually it's definitely like the original um, greatest show, like whatever his name is, Lindsay Ellis has done a video on him. So nuance is not a thing that is like exactly uh, done on these shows because like whilst there may be attempts at it, then it's mostly surface level, just whatever is quick and easy and it's like I can cast this person as the villain, we're going to cast this person as a victim and then we're going to cast the other woman or whatever else as a villain as well. But maybe sometimes we'll victimise her too because if she's on Oprah then it tends to like be on the woman's side instead. So for example with Oprah, so she had women who had cheated on men and then she had men that had cheated on women. And the way that she treated them quite differently was the women were brought out on stage and they had to confront all of this stuff on stage stage at the very beginning but then the men were in this private room with her like the cameras were in there but it was a private room so you couldn't get all of like the audience judging them we're still doing this whole thing where it's like the other woman's fault for cheating even though the men are normally lying about this <laughs> it's a problem leaves me as well about like the effect of freaks on stage is because people are bear baited to be drawn out into like such an emotional state a lot of the time like these things are really fresh for them so this judgement happens at a point where you can take clips from it 
And so this has led to a lot of memeable stuff, which is just there forever and gets referenced all the time, no matter what age you are, no matter how much you've grown up. You become a meme and you are the internet's forever. Now again, Khadija has done an amazing video on um, blackface and like the way that that has transformed in the time of the internet, which I really do recommend you watch too. You may actually have the opinion of, well, you put yourself on this show, so you've actually given up your right to privacy now. May I just remind you of the type of people that tend to go on these shows, in particular the ones to find out paternity tests and to get this sort of help. Right now, the average hourly wage in a, across America, I know that changes from state to state, job to job, whatever, but it's $11.30, like roughly around there. And a uh, price of getting one session of therapy is an average of $90, meanwhile it can be a max of $250. So if you're earning $11.30 per day, <laughs> if you're earning $11.30 per hour, then you've got a whole day's work to dedicate to just put in towards one session of therapy. So it's like when you've got this poverty crisis across America, how do you expect these people to be able to afford to go to a $90 therapy session or like however much more expensive it gets? I need to put a trigger warning in because I'll be mentioning briefly, um, so go to this timestamp. Not many corporate jobs actually do offer employee assistance programs. Like getting mental health access can often be limited to if you're on the brink of suicide because I've experienced that in the past. That's the only time that you can get the free help when we can actually see there's a wide range of issues that require therapy. <laughs> so, so these people go on these shows not because, no, not always because they want to get famous but most of the time it's to get help and then they're just being exploited and I'm like what is this life that we are all leading and participating in you know? This leads me on to my next point which is groupthink and mob mentality. So like I mentioned before it's the host and the producers and editors that provide the entire narrative for the show. They typically theme things to be like very similar like all of the teen moms get together, all of the people that survive domestic violence, like all of that stuff. They tend to be lumped together and like, hey, this fun one hour special, we can all combine our trauma together and not really like address root cause issues or like do anything worthwhile, which we could actually help people. But yeah, fun. Because there's nothing quite like going from someone that is like, I'm not the father and then booing them to then showing a picture of a baby and being like, oh. So Jarvis Johnson, another great channel, which I do recommend, and I'll put this video up here because he was talking about the Maury show. But because you've got like this whole revolving door aspect, like Ricky Lake definitely suffers from this. I think it was a lot more because like the producers really wanted to have like this fast, like we want the juiciest stuff and when people were being reasonable about the fact that they were gay or whatever and the their ex-partner was like, oh yeah, that's okay, like that's absolutely fine, I fully support you, you're a great person, and then they're like, moving on to the next one, we, we, need, we need someone throwing a chair. Which leads me to the problem of the fact that we've got people that are just throwing the chair at people, you've got people that are causing um, these issues and there are jeers that are happening because you still get those cards or those signs that flash up saying like boo, cheer, clap, like whatever and when you have people booing and jeering you on stage when you're still dealing with this um, issue like you're normally you're going through like some sort of mental health crisis if you're on one of these shows and then you have like this whole pile on happening how are you meant to react? How are you meant to be able to cope with this, especially afterwards? Like I said, the aftermath of these shows is where it can get really dangerous, which we'll talk about in the next section. This whole mob mentality and the the way that it's actually sort of like celebrated and is the norm kind of makes me feel like we, we had this from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, still going on in the 2010s and then we've got to today. And what do we have today? We have internet pylons happening. So you have people that have done something that is wrong or whatever, now look, I am all for accountability culture and making sure that people have opportunities to change, learn and grow. I'm all for that. When you've got like this whole internet like attacking you, if you're already in a vulnerable space, it can take you down even further. And so it's like, yes, you can not support them or whatever, but the encouragement of like throwing a chair at someone, doing all of this stuff and like holding them accountable by degrading them in, in a way, like that sort of in my opinion, led us to like what we've got now. Like it's all well and good holding someone accountable, but you don't go sending them death threats, you don't go like stalking them and stuff like 
just because someone is online it doesn't mean that you can treat them like they're not actually a human it just feels like there is some sort of link in between the fact that we've had generations watching all of this to where we've gotten to today like i said i believe that people can change learn and grow i also believe that some people are just trash and i'm like i won't support them but i'm not gonna actively hate them like to their face you know i had to just stop filming completely because my throat had just dried up but i've just put on my mascara and if you're wondering why my eyes look so much brighter i used this which is light core from linda halberg now let's get on to the next theme which is superiority so what you can do is you can eat up your oodles of noodles quite happily on the couch watching and judging these people as you've been trained to do as you've been told to do as all of the social and visual cues are telling you to do but because you would never be the person that stays in a relationship that is abusive you would never have a child that was a cross dresser yes that's a phrase that was used you would never have a teen daughter that got pregnant because obviously that's a reflection on you and your bad parenting it's not huge societal issues at play but hey you know whatever whatever makes you feel better it is branded as being entertainment so why should you feel guilty why should you question anything that has been shown to you as being anything other than real and not scripted these shows are made to make you feel more in control and like you actually understand all of the problems of the world and grateful for the life that you lead but then also they're framed in such a way where you can be judgmental of these people at the same time as wanting to be a guest on these shows and these people have gotten rich off it i'm putting it out there as well all of these hosts all of the people on the shows like the producers obviously not the guests of the shows only in a few cases have actually gotten rich from these shows so again exploitation of the poor and the needy so let's talk the very real dangers of the shows and ramifications. I will have a trigger warning right here. We are gonna be talking about suicide, self-harm, massive mental health issues. So please skip ahead to this point right here if that will trigger you or you can click off, I do not mind. So the Jeremy Kyle show. Now this is one where someone did actually commit suicide after being on the show because of how traumatic it actually was for them. Like I said before, there are real life dangers to these shows and this is the event that actually cancelled the Jeremy Kyle show as a whole. So quite infamously for British history, shall we say, along with all of the other stuff that they've done wrong, with the Jeremy Kyle show, um, Steve Diamond actually took his own life. Now I'm just going to read to make sure that I get this all correct. He passed away seven days after being on the show. His experience was honestly brutal. He failed a polygraph test, which uh, by the way, awfully inaccurate. Kendall Ray um, talks about this all the time. Polygraph tests are a lie, much like these shows are. So he was actually just trying to prove that he hadn't cheated on his fiance. And so he took his polygraph test because of course you would go on the Jeremy Kyle show because you do not have access to a polygraph test unless you committed a crime you wouldn't get that in from the police as well and that this is like a show of like you can trust me so much that i'll go on and prove to you through this inaccurate test that i did not cheat on you so the audience booed and jeered at him like as they do as they're encouraged to and jeremy actually called him to his face a failure so you've got this huge onslaught around you the host of the show getting in your face calling you a failure and then he tried to leave because this was getting too much for him and the door to exit was locked so he collapsed onto his hands and knees like absolutely freaking out in panic from the stress now you need to realize as well that Jeremy Kyle had a massive following in the UK and also internationally as well, but it was huge in the UK. Here in New Zealand, it even plays a show too. So everyone was really on his side because they saw him as being the good guy. But the bigger problem here is the fact that Steve said whilst he was actually still on the premises in front of people that he wishes that he was dead. Now this is a show with a psychologist normally on hand called Graham and so the producers actually also knew well in advance that he was on antidepressants and he also had to get approval from his doctor to be able to go on the show. Now I understand for a show like Fear Factor or something why you'd need to get the doctor's approval to say that you're fit to go on the show but a, a TV show that is actually meant to help your problems he needed to get a doctor's note to let him go on this show because it's that 
bad. You should not need to have a doctor's note to go on a regular TV show that is meant to be helping you with your issues. But whilst this is one absolutely like huge concrete example, like there are many other issues behind these shows, not only for the participants but the viewers too. And there has actually been a study that has been done as well. Thank you, science. So this is about viewer attraction and aggression towards talk shows. I'll link this below as I do with all of my sources. So as opposed to like these shows allowing people to like think critically and have a bit of self-reflection maybe because that could be very helpful if you like you were taught those sorts of skills. Like the whole thing is like they don't want to help people because if they actually gave people the tools in which to build resilience and be self-reliant and realize the toxic things that they're actually doing in their own lives then they wouldn't get like the guests to go on these shows anymore right it's like why fix the problem when it makes more sense to profit off the problem so you're not encouraged to think critically about any of this stuff it's just honestly like this flashbang of violence yelling making people feel worthless telling them that they are or aren't the father having absolutely massive life moments in front of not only like an iconic person but a live audience and then also like i said broadcast nationally and internationally now like i said before we've had four generations of people that ever watched these shows are still watching these shows. Whilst not everyone watched them, enough did for this to have an impact in my opinion. It's like, it kind of makes sense how we've devolved into like this more sensationalist news, into having forms of entertainment that are around exploiting people, like you've got the David Dobricks of the world, you've got the Shane Dawson's of the world, you've got the Jake Pauls of the world. You have a large number of people that have profited from not actually taking into account like any bigger picture critical thinking stuff. Because these people are just to entertain us and so like by doing cruel pranks, like that is seen to be like a form of entertainment, not something that is actually inherently wrong and shouldn't be done. Things are starting to shift now, but when you really think about like how we got to this point, like I think that these shows are part of the problem at getting us to where we are now. I think that all of this combined has led to our like lack of compassion and big picture thinking, which has led to more people judging and pointing fingers at the other side as opposed to figuring out like the bigger systemic issues which are fighting against us, <laughs> such as having two party systems in politics <laughs> and allowing for politicians to actually get money from big donors to make sure that their businesses don't go out of business. We are solutions focused because solutions are key to getting through life. So let's get on to it. What are we going to do about all of this? I'm very grateful that shows like this aren't as much of a thing anymore. It does make a big difference. So you've still got things like TMZ and whatever trash is actually going on there. I, I personally haven't watched TV in years, <laughs> so I don't really know exactly what is out there, but I don't believe that we've got anything other than the Dr. Phil show and Maury now. Um, there may be still some Jerry Springer, but hopefully it's obvious that that's show is like fake as anything. We need to always ask ourselves and remember to ask why something is being pushed. And of course like what the end goal is because the thing is that everyone has a bias including me which is why I'm very open with my biases and I make sure to let you know about that. Not much is really made as like pure entertainment. There is a little bit possibly on TikTok and YouTube but not much is really pure entertainment. Most things do have an agenda and an end goal. So remembering to have like that critical thinking is crucial. Secondly, like I keep on alluding to, we need to make sure to use our votes wisely and be educated and informed and active voters. This is not just during like the big elections, this is constantly. Now politics is boring as all hell. Like it's really important that we're actively working to level the playing field for people to make sure that exploitation like what I've just been talking about doesn't actually happen. There, there are so many things that have led to this point that led to like these people being exploited and still goes on today. Like this is why being involved in politics is one of the best things that you can actually do and being an informed voter is so crucial. Personally I don't believe that we should always have to rely on charities to pick up the pieces. I think that society as a whole should make sure that these issues do not come to the forefront to begin with. By being informed on resources and useful things to say, how to act, it will not only help you with your own struggles but other people as well. The biggest of all of the things is making sure that you do not platform these bad companies, these bad people. By talking about them, by watching them, by actually engaging with the content, you are making more of an appetite in this outrage culture 
than what we need <laughs> you're like by watching this stuff you're actively keeping it alive i know that i've been watching these shows so that i can critically comment on it and now i'm getting recommended that by youtube all the time but hopefully that will revert back to like my swoops my other great content creators that i follow and watch and love you know by highlighting and talking about um, really great entertainment that is actually doing good stuff, teaching good things by highlighting content creators that are doing good stuff, like by shifting the view away from the negative, from the quick judgment stuff, to be critical thinking, to be nice, happy entertainment that doesn't have to like hurt people, Ellen, um, then that will result in a way more positive outcome. So yes, I am very, very keen to hear your views on all of this as well. Since we're talking about this, um, please insert this emoji, the big brain emoji, because obviously like, I've just downloaded a lot of information to you, and I really, really appreciate it if you made it all the way to the end. Next week, I'll be talking about the child exploitation that happens with these shows and with shows in general. But if any other video content uh, ideas that you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comments down below. I really appreciate you spending your time here. I know that you have a choice. And yeah, just thank you so much. And I'll see you again next Tuesday, maybe on Sunday with a review. Who knows? Um, um, I've been using things for a lot of months now, so it's kind of like I've got this sort of build up for each week for a little bit at least. So yeah, let's see. Have a wonderful week everyone. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Welcome to the area that I live in where we have cops around all the time. So I had to pause there. <laughs> I'm, go I'm gonna get through this. I I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna get- now that song will be stuck in my head. I don't need to add it to my 90s and 2000s playlist. Such a good banger. Like, honestly, such a banger. <coughs> Not <my> <coughs>